Mr Chairman and thank you all for staying this late. I know you guys have uh, stuff to do, places to go. I too have something on after this. Uh, so thank you all very much for staying this late. Uh, when my mom was a trainee teacher, she was in the staff room one day and her colleague came in and remarked, poor foundation. Now, my mom has since passed away, but as late as when she was mid-career, she would, she would tell me this story and she would, she would add her own remarks and say, you know, the children are but primary two. What kind of foundation do you expect from them? I took this remark in my stride, but being educators yourselves, I guess you guys know about formative and impressionable years. Now imagine yourselves, primary one or K1 teachers. It's the first day of school, and here's your class in front of you. What kind, when do you expect to introduce them to language and grammar skills, uh, how to read and write, how to count? I think all of you will be thrilled already if they come up to you and say, teacher, can I go potty instead of peeing and pooing in their seat? What about programming? When do you introduce programming to children? Now, in Coda Dojo, this, the guideline that we are given is 7 to 17 years old. Now, these are guidelines as in, for those of you who saw Pirates of the Caribbean, guidelines are quite flexible and negotiable. The thing is, nobody 7 years old has come to us yet. Neither have people on the upper end of the spectrum, but there are people who are way, way, way above, who are, mid -career, who are past mid-career, uh, some of them approaching retirement age, who have come to us and say, uh, look, I'm looking for a second career. Uh, I'd like to learn programming. And that sort of thing does happen. When I was in the U, and that was a pretty long time ago, uh, I don't know whether you guys have this experience or not, but we had a central computer that ran uh, BSD Unix. And everybody was using the same, had an account on the same system. So there was no, pos no possibility, absolutely no possibility of any compatibility problems. Your system works or your account works exactly the same as the next person. So no, no possibility. Today, we are in a bring-your-own-device world, BYOD. Some of you have heard of this term. What happens is the students bring their own computers. You have people bringing Windows XP systems. Right? Some people bring Windows 2000 systems, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> All right. And then different versions of OS X. Uh, we had one person bring a... Surface tablet, another guy bring a Chromebook. I don't know how you run, uh, run Python on Chromebook, but we eventually got him started. Now, many of them don't know how to administer their own systems or, or maintain their own systems for that matter. So somehow we have to show them how. Occasionally, we get one guy who doesn't know how to log in and doesn't know how to shut down his system. Probably he borrowed his, his dad's, dad or mom's notebook or something like that. Right? And that does happen. It does happen. I am a Linux user. The last uh, OS X version that I used was probably 10 or 11 years ago. It was a Power Mac in those days. Um, the last Windows system, it was a Windows 7. Uh, some of you are still using Windows 7, so I'm, I'm not, that back, not that backward yet. It was, well, less than 10 years ago, but more than 5 years ago, so I can quite proudly say that 
I'm neither Mac or Windows savvy anymore. I'm a Linux user, like I said. My youngest student, she was nine years old when she came to us. She's 10 years old now. Uh, she did not know that there was a command line in her computer. Needless to say, she had never typed a single sentence in her life. We eventually got her set up, and when we asked her, now type this sentence. So she typed one letter, and she scoured the entire keyboard looking for the next letter, got impatient, and her mind started to wander, and you guys know what happens to children when their minds start to wander. None of us are teachers in Koda Dojo, none of us. Some of us were systems analysts before or programmers in our last lifetime. Uh, Tamin is one of them over here. And um, there are other people like, me, like myself who took a few programming classes in school. My first job, the job title was called software engineer. Wow, wonderful, isn't it? Well, I hated it. Okay, so I made sure that my second job onward, I will not apply for any job that has the word software inside the title. By the grace of God, I got it, and somehow I did not have to do any more programming, but I still had to write a couple of scripts, which were four or five lines. It was okay, I could live with that. All right, that's one thing I really love about Python. Python is very, very script-like. Uh, as Tamin has shown you in the previous uh, the, uh, presentation, there are no begins and ends. <laughs> so that was, there are other challenges, of course, but uh, I, I'll leave that to Tamin to let you know one of these days. In Coda Dojo, we have a hierarchy of people, uh, and they have ranks as well as titles. Right? So right at the top, we have the champion. He's usually the founder of the organization. Uh, there is a sub-organization that is. And uh, the rest of our, and he, his job, like a principal, is very administrative. It's 80% administrative. However, he has to still make big decisions. So, that, so he needs some technical knowledge. Uh, the next level down are mentors. Uh, Tamin and I were mentors before. Uh, I, I still am one. Uh, Tamin, you can come back anytime you like <laughs> and continue as mentor. Right? And the ne next level down is mentor, and we do most of the interacting with the students. And um, uh, if they have problems, they will come to us. Right? Although we're not supposed to be the first line of support for them, but uh, I'll come to that as well. Now, the next line is a little, a little bit more uh, administrative. It, in fact, it's 100% administrative. Uh, they are the same rank as the mentors, uh, the, the administrators. Uh, I don't see them around much. Uh, in fact, I've seen them once. And I, if I see them again on the street, I doubt if I would recognize them. So the next level is mentors. And uh, the next level are the junior mentors. Junior mentors are, in fact, students or ninjas who have risen through the ranks and they are interested in doing uh, in helping other students rise up right and then right below are the students otherwise known as ninjas uh, in as ninjas uh, they also have a hierarchy there they have the hierarchy is white belt to black belt kind of like martial arts that's why the place is called a dojo. Uh, some of you might be familiar with martial arts. The rest of you familiar with Six Sigma. It's the same thing. Six Sigma, in fact, got it from martial arts. Okay, so uh, white, so white belt right up to black belt. They have various uh, increasing levels of expertise uh, according to uh, the expectation that is required of them. Uh, we have measures for them to. Now, when I first joined Koda Dojo, I said one of the things that they told me was training is provided. Well, okay, fine. I don't know anything about Python. I don't know anything about 
about I, my programming. The last program I wrote was in the U, uh, or my first job actually, and uh, I, I don't think I, I don't think I really appreciated that. But never mind. Maybe I can can uh, get get into it again. Now, the thing is, the 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 training was not as interactive as I thought. It is actually a computer-based training, which is actually okay because uh, what happens is I could access it from the comfort of my desk. It is web-based, so anywhere. In fact, I could have gone to Starbucks and, and done it because it doesn't make any noise. It doesn't, it, so everything is read from the screen. So that was okay. But I found out a lot of things about Coda Dojo from the computer-based training. For one thing, there, is, there are some guidelines on how to interact with your students. And one of the things is called Ask 3, Then Me. Right? Ask 3, Then Me, what it means is not really asking three people. First, if you have a problem as a ninja, as the mentor, you're supposed to tell him, look, ask 3, Then Me. What it means is, ask the person on your left, Ask the person on your right, and if you still don't get the answer, Google it. And if you still don't get the answer, then you can ask me. That has got very, that has pretty good and bad set side effects. Uh, one of the good things about that is it really teaches the student how to interact with other people inside his dojo and build the social uh, networking skills rather than social media. Now, social media is, in my opinion, the second worst invention next to the mobile phone. Right? So, uh, at least he builds up some social skills. He, can work, he knows how to work in teams. He knows how to plan a project and they can divide the work out properly and he knows how to communicate with, his, with the rest of it the rest of his fellow ninjas. So that was the good, good things about it. The bad thing about it is if you are in a room that doesn't have Wi-Fi, then it's a problem because even as the mentor, if you wanted to show him how to search for the necessary resources, uh, it's not possible. You have to do it from memory somehow. And uh, these are things that we are working with the uh, community center management for that. The other thing that uh, we were taught inside the computer-based training was do not touch the student's keyboard. Let him do everything. Now, that's also easier said than done. There was one student I was teaching. He was a very brilliant student. The problem is he was really all thumbs. He would fidget about and he would put... and when he moves his hand ac across the keyboard, what happens is nowadays we have something called touchpads. And what, it, what would happen when he moves his hand ac across the touchpad is he would select a block of text. Now, let me ask you all something. Some of you might not remember this, but let me ask you guys. When you first learned how to type, did you look at the keyboard or did you look at the screen when you typed? Now, most of us, looked at the keyboard. And so, looking at the keyboard, he does not know that he has selected a whole block of text and <laughs> gone, everything. His entire work is gone. And then after that, he comes to me and tells me, hey, what happened? It was working a second ago. And I said, you overrode it. <laughs> right? And when he does that sort of thing, I am tempted to, do, I'm tempted to tell him, in fact, I did this several times, uh, look, you don't worry about this. Let, let me do your assignment for you. And I would tap. There you go. It works now. <laughs> right. So these, these are the things that, these are some of the things that are really exasperating that happen. I do, however, uh, apply this rule of ask three, but don't ask me. If they come to me and tell me, I have this OS level problem, what do I do? Uh, Reason being that not, I, I don't know why I have told my students that I've actually given a presentation to them and told them the advantages of using the Linux system, but none of them do it. 
In fact, all of us mentors use, use Linux systems. So I'm not sure why the students haven't caught on. Um, how do you guys pick up a new skill? Right? It's the same for adults and children. Drill, drill, and more drill. Uh, in Coda Dojo, what happens is we have uh, what we call sushi cards. Now, sushi cards uh, give us uh, a modular. They give you one lesson at a time in, in Python. For example, a print statement or an if statement. Uh, what happens? How do you use those sorts of things? What is the syntax for that? Then they give you a short exercise that is isolated for that command. Now, here's the problem. Sushi cards uh, do not tell you how to solve a, an entire big problem and uh, solve, a, solve a problem, basically. Not even a big problem. So just solve any problems. Okay? Uh, for example, uh, they don't tell you how to uh, do... Uh, math mathematical problems like uh, arithmetic or geometric progression, that kind of thing. Right. So those, those sorts of things, they don't, they don't tell you how to do that. Uh, if you guys want to download sushi cards, you can go to coderdojo.com under resources, look for Python. Right. Those, are, those are the sushi cards that we have. And we are, uh, as people who run dojos, we are welcome and encouraged and you guys as well are welcome and encouraged to write your own sushi cards. They provide you with the template to write the sushi card and upload it to the web. But even the current sushi cards, we've, we have found mistakes in them. All right. The problem is we don't know how to tell them that, look, uh, these, are, these are the mistakes because we don't know who wrote them. <laughs> that's, the, that's one of the problems that we are having. Uh, so how did we overcome this problem? Well, in fact, uh, we ourselves found exercises uh, on the web. The uh, Coder Dojo also gave us links to some, some of the sites. We googled others. Uh, NLB has got a rich resource in as far as uh, Python books are concerned. Uh, we can, we, there are exercises in there as well. Uh, where, what else? Okay, my own uh, my, my own coder, uh, dojo champion, what he did was he got a few, what do you call this, um, a few interview questions uh, in Python and he posted them, uh, he made presentation, presentation slides out of them and he says, okay guys, this is only in the PDF format, uh, but you guys just download the PDF uh, and try to solve the problem. E either that or we'll give you a thumb drive that you can just copy it to your hard disk and, and you look at the thing. Uh, one of the things about our, our dojo, I'm not, I'm not sure whether other dojos do this or not, but one of the things that we do, at least uh, our champion did this, he took all the, all the slides from the, uh, sorry, not all the slides, all the sushi cards from the... Um, from the Coder Dojo website, he printed them out and he laminated them. So they are actual cards. Actual cards. He put, took several copies of them, put it on the teacher's table. The first session, he gave it out uh, and, the, and the students will come back to him and say, Teacher, teacher, I've, I've, I've finished with this card. Oh, very good. Okay, come, let's go, go to the teacher's table, take out the next one. Here you go, here's the next one. Never mind, leave, leave, the, leave the one that you finished over here. I'll sort it out for you. And uh, that happened for several, several sessions and finally we, we told them, oh, you finish your, finish your this card, okay, uh, go help yourself to the next one and this one, you just take it and put it, put it there, we'll sort it out for you. Okay, so now they help themselves to it, so they know, they know what, what, to, what to do. Now, uh, other things that Coder Dojo does, one of the things is hardware. Uh, we have, in Coder Dojo in Nisun East uh, uh, CC, uh, there's only one in Singapore, actually. So, but uh, in Nisun ECC, uh, uh, we had in mind to create a Raspberry Pi server, but uh, it never materialized. 
because we had no use for it after that. And if we have no use for it, what would happen is it would just, you know, would just because nobody is there to maintain it, nobody is there to it, administer it, it would just fall into disrepair and, and that would be the end of it. So we decided until we have some need that arises, we will not install a Raspberry Pi server. In fact, some of us have the hardware at home. Right? And uh, that's, that's for Raspberry Pi. Adreno, we don't have one, but, other, but I understand other, other dojos do teach, but not in Singapore, too bad. Uh, we, we can if we wanted to. Uh, there are sushi cards available on how to get started in, in uh, Adreno and uh, Raspberry Pi. Now, soft skills is another thing that we would like to introduce, but uh, they have to, the, the students really need to brush up their hard skills first because you need hard skills, you need to have a big enough problem to solve before you create a project team in order to bring them together so that you, say you can divide the work into this fellow has got this expertise, we give him this job to do, next fellow has got this expertise, we give him this job to do, so on and so forth. We break the problem down into smaller parts. Right, right now, we are breaking the pro problem down into smaller parts, but one person can do it. Right, so that's the, that's the current paradigm. Now, the, the, other pro the other problem that we are having is dropouts. Because once they build a relationship with somebody, their best friend, their best friend drops out. So there's no possibility that this guy can become part of this guy's project team in, the, in anywhere in the near future because he has dropped out. Uh, why do they drop out? Well, there are many reasons. Uh, there are some that I really cannot answer because uh, I was telling some of you over lunch that one day this guy comes, up, comes in with his kid and he is bubbling with excitement. He was saying, you know, if you just uh, want to attend a lesson in Scratch. Oh, by the way, you can go to the Coder Dojo website and you can get things like Scratch, HTML, CSS, uh, Java, JavaScript, you know, those sorts of programming languages if you're, if you're interested. But anyway, this guy was talking about Scratch and there's not really much commercial viability for Scratch. Uh, this guy says, if you want to send your kid for some uh, lesson in Scratch, uh, it costs this much money and for five sessions. And uh, I said, well, okay, we are a CC, we cannot charge any money for, any, for anything. We are all volunteers here, we don't even get compensated for transportation. So, gee, uh, that's, that's how it works here. And he says, oh, so good, ah, wow. But next session, he doesn't show up. The session after that, he doesn't show up, he, ne he never shows up again, we never saw him again. And that was not an isolated incident. It happened several times. Right? Why? We don't know. Uh, the, other, the other case, of course, you all will be very familiar with, people who simply, uh, after the first or second session, reality kicks in. They know that programming is not as glamorous as playing game. That's why many of them decided to do programming because they thought it was like playing game. It's not as exciting, it's not as rewarding. So they disappeared after the first or second session. Uh, but this is supposed to be an activity for both parent and child. So if, you are, if the child is under 12, in fact, we asked them to be accompanied. There was one occasion whereby this kid keeps coming in by himself and clearly he was under 12. We told him that, uh, look, uh, next session, can you please bring your guardian along? Uh, it doesn't have to be your parent, it can be your elder brother or sister or neighbor. It's, it's also okay, so long as the elder person accompanies you. Okay, fine. He never shows up again. All right, so those sorts of things happen. So you have to be pretty sensitive about these sorts of things. One of the things that I find most disturbing is what are we teaching anyway? We're supposed to be teaching Python, but we're spending most of our time teaching people how to type, teaching people how to use, the, use Atom Editor or something like that, how to navigate their own operating system. 
And we spend a lot of time doing those things instead of teaching them what we are supposed to teach them. It's uh, rather discouraging, but I am consoled by what my mom tells me. They are looking at the command line for the first time in their lives. What kind of foundation do you expect? Back to you, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you.